It is a cozy Sunday evening, or at least it is when I'm filming it. By the time this goes up, it will be a Monday and I will be settled into my new house. But right now it is a cozy Sunday evening. Most of my books are in boxes. Most of my stuff is in boxes, including my hairbrush, as you might be able to tell. But all of the organizing that I had to do while packing my books has just really got me in the mood to keep going. So I decided that next I'm going to tackle my Kindle. Whenever I see a book in the Kindle store that I like the look of, I tend to just download a sample straight to my device and then I forget about it. So my Kindle is kind of full of all of these samples that I can't even remember what they're about or why I downloaded them and I never get around to reading them. So I decided that this lazy Sunday evening is the perfect time. I'm going to do basically the try a chapter tag, but it's try a Kindle sample and I'm just going to clear out all of the crap on my Kindle that I'm never going to read. So let's have a look. Okay, so the first title on my list is Can't Get You Out of My Head by Raj Pasaud. Now I feel like I remember this one was about a stalker, something with a therapist and a stalker, that's kind of what I'm remembering. Okay, so I'm going to look up the cover. Okay, that's not telling much, so I'll just have a look at the blurb. Yes, it is about a therapist, a psychiatrist, but you know what, I think if I saw this book on a shelf, I'm not sure I'd pick it up. There's nothing about it that's really grabbing my attention, so I think that first one I'm going to strike from my TBR. Okay, so that was a very good start, one down already. The next one is called Pretty Baby by Mary Kubica. Pretty Baby. Now I feel like that might be a stalking thing as well. I feel like it's going to be creepy. The name Pretty Baby sounds creepy, doesn't it? Maybe about like a beauty pageant star who gets kidnapped. Okay, so that could still be the case, kind of creepy looking cover. There's something kind of wintry about it. Which one's the UK cover? Maybe that one. I'm not sure. That cover has definitely drawn me in. So, we're going to try a chapter. Oh, it's an actual baby. Okay, so that was a really good, intriguing first chapter. Basically, all that happens is a woman, we don't know who she is or really anything about her, spots a girl on a train platform holding a baby and there's something about it that's very mysterious we don't really get to know either of the characters but for some reason the woman is very drawn to this girl and not quite sure why and it just felt eerie i feel like something's gonna happen maybe she's gonna kidnap the girl i have no idea but i definitely want to keep reading that one okay what's next what's next here i have what we saw by aaron hartzler now that sounds like another creepy one i love creepy ones it sounds like i know what you did last summer kind of thing Ooh, unless it might be the one about a rape case and now I feel like that title's ringing a bell, that's going to be very different. So the cover isn't helping out much in this case, it's just a doorknob. The subtitle, The Closer You Look, The More You See. Let's give the first chapter a try. Hmm, very interesting. Okay, so in that first chapter, we see somebody watching back a video from when they're five years old, playing football with one of their friends and accidentally hurting them and being really upset. And it all sounds like it's foreshadowing something. They keep talking about what they and their friend are going to grow up to be and how you wouldn't be able to tell from the video and how if you weren't looking close enough you'd miss these things. It's very much building up to something and I very much want to know what. So I'm definitely going to keep reading that one. Oh, and she's gone. Okay. This one is called John Dies at the End by David Wong. So very interesting title. That instantly makes me think that it's a comedy because that's such a weird quirky title. Oh, so kind of crazy creepy looking cover actually with the hand. Definitely intrigued by that one. Let's have a look. Hmm. What? I really can't work out what I think of that one. That was definitely super intriguing for a first chapter. We have a main character called David Wong, which is the name of the author. He and his friend John, who the title says is going to die, are psychics, but I wasn't really loving reading it, I wasn't really enjoying it. So I think what I might do is skip that one off my TBR and maybe just look up a synopsis because I'm just genuinely intrigued what that was going to be about. Okay, we have Her by Harriet Lane. Now that kind of one word title definitely sounds like a thriller, but I do download a lot of thriller samples, don't I? I can't really guess much else from that title, but let's have a look at the cover and I'm guessing it's going to look kind of scary. You don't remember her, but she remembers you. Whoa! I have to read that sample. Ooh, this is exactly the kind of story that I love. It's about two women, one of them, as you could guess from the subtitle, one of them recognises the other, but the other one doesn't. And they obviously have some shared history that we don't know about, and I'm always really intrigued by that kind of story. But for some reason I wasn't particularly gripped by this. I don't know if it's just because it didn't really build tension when she recognised her, but I didn't get that pull of wanting to know what their history is. 
So as I've got some other good ones on this list, I think I'm going to strike that one off the TBR. Right, now I can already tell from the author that this is going to be another thriller. God, I didn't know I had such a type. This one's called The Telling Error, and it's by Sophie Hanna, who writes thrillers that, to be honest, are always a little bit hit and miss. She's very good at making them creepy, but they often end a little bit over the top and not quite believable. The Telling Error as a title, not sure if I'm excited by that one. Ooh, what is that? Scary. Think you want to know the secret? Think again. Ooh, that does look creepy, and I'm torn because I love the look of it, if I didn't know that author and I saw it on a shelf, I would definitely want to buy it, but I've just had not great experiences with that author before. But I do tend to enjoy them, it's just that the ending's bad. So reading a sample isn't even going to help, because I would read it, enjoy it, and then I'll get to the end and be annoyed. You know what, I'm going to be really strong and I'm going to strike that one from my TBR, because I've got loads of other thrillers already and maybe I don't need this one. Okay, then we have If On A Winter's Night A Traveller. Hmm, interesting title. It sounds kind of romantic. I think that's going to be quite a slow moving sort of gentle love story. Ooh, I like that cover. Fun quirky letters. Ooh, that makes me think not romance at all. Wasn't expecting that. It looks like a bookshelf. Ooh, I love books about books. Ooh, let's give it a go. Oh my god, I already love this. It's talking to me as the reader. I love this. Oh my god. I don't even need to read that whole chapter. I already love it. You know sometimes you just look at the first page of a book and you just know it's right for you? I love things that are kind of meta and this starts. You're about to begin reading Italo Calvino's new novel, If On A Winter's Night A Traveller. This book is just speaking to me, literally. <laughs> okay, what else you got? The Book by M. Clifford. Sounds like another book about books. That's always a good sign. It sounds like it could be a scary one again. Things that are the something usually are. It's like The Ring. Maybe it's like a haunted book. Huh recycling sign weird well there's this cover with the american flag don't read the book i'm not sure what to make of that I'm gonna have to give it a go okay i'm gonna turn this on it's getting a little dark oh that's better okay so that was very interesting again not what i was expecting it seems to be set in the future and the first scene is basically just a guy on a train reading a book but he calls it the book with capitals and everybody has one in this future society and he's reading a particular story but it keeps getting interrupted by adverts or updates and it starts by saying do not read the book so that was weird i definitely want to know what that one's about so yeah i'm gonna keep that one okay next on the list we have Dear Daughter. So that sounds like it's going to be from the perspective of a mother, I guess. It sounds like it's going to be quite slow, maybe quite moving and nice. Okay, whoa, definitely not. When did you last want to murder your mother? Oh, and this cover's creepy with a burning match. Okay, yeah, definitely not a nice letter from a mother. Whoa, okay, definitely going to try a chapter. Oh my god, yes, please. So that was from the perspective of a daughter being released from prison where she's been for the murder of her mother, but it's unclear if she actually did kill her mother, it's all very mysterious. It seems like even she's not sure, but there's all these gory details about her having blood under her fingernails and her name being written in blood next to her mother's body, but I'm not sure if it was saying that she did kill her, but it ended by saying that she can't shake the feeling that the only way she's going to work it out is by killing again. Oh my god, so scary. That is definitely one that I want to read more of. Okay, The Good Girl. Now that really could be about anything, The Good Girl. My first guess is a love story, but I don't know why. I think maybe because there's a Jennifer Aniston movie called The Good Girl, is that right? Oh, it's by the same author as that other thriller, so it's looking like it's a thriller. Again, sorry. <laughs> the secretive looking girl's quite intriguing. Let's give it a go. Hmm, okay. Not convinced by that one, to be honest. So in that first chapter, it's from the point of view of a mother who gets a call from one of her daughter's friends saying that she has been missing from her job that morning. But it did all feel a bit escalated. The friend was very, very worried, and she's only been missing for a few hours. But she's a grown-up, and surely there could be a lot of explanations for it. So nothing there really gripped me as like, oh, what a scary opening. I just wasn't that interested in where this girl is. I'm gonna strike that one off. Okay, what do we have here? Find Me by Laura Van Den Berg. Find Me, um, that sounds like it could be a love story. Ten years after a great love story, them writing letters to each other to find each other across continents. That's my guess. Hmm, could be. Kind of looks underwatery. It's quite a nice looking cover. It's quite simple and striking. Let's have a look at the first chapter. That was very weird. So it was set in a hospital, 
There's a woman in a hospital, we don't know why, but she's been there for months, and there's a group of them and they seem to be slowly dying out, and there are people that they call pilgrims who come and gather outside the hospital and look in. Why are they in the hospital? Who are these people watching them and why? I don't know why I'm not getting more excited, because that was very mysterious, but I know how excited I can get about first chapters, so I think I could hold out for a bit better. So that one is off the TBR list. Okay, the next one, I just love this title, it's called The Peculiar Life of a Lonely Postman, which instantly makes me want to read it. I'm guessing it's about a lonely postman. Maybe a kind of sadly funny one. Pretty cover, that's pretty. Not what I was expecting. I was visualising a post box, probably because I'm very unimaginative. It's a very nice book cover, actually. Let's see if the inside matches. That might be a very sweet book if I kept going. It was a very gentle first chapter, which is what I predicted. I quite liked the main character. He puts a lot of importance on his job as a postman, and he really got the sense of his pride in that. And right as the chapter was coming to an end, it said that he then has a secret vice, and we don't know what that's going to be. But there was some magic missing from the writing, I think. In that kind of gentle story, I feel like I need to be pulled along by this gorgeous prose, and I just wasn't really. I'm gonna strike it from my TBR for now, because there wasn't enough in that chapter alone to make me want to read it, but if someone ever recommended it to me, I would then have it in my mind and think, okay, yeah, I'm gonna give it another go. So if anyone's read it, let me know. Then we have Without You by Saskia Sargensen. Without You just makes me assume that somebody has died before the start of a book, and it's the story of the main character learning to live without this loved person. Ooh, interesting. Okay, they thought she was lost forever. Now that's much more intriguing, and I like that striking front cover. It's really tense. Yeah, that definitely seems like it's going to be a good one. So in the sample there was the prologue and the first chapter. The prologue is from the point of view of the girl who drowns, and you see her drowning, and she has an out-of-body experience, sees herself lying apparently dead on the floor, but then somebody, we don't know who, finds her, gives her mouth to mouth, and she's pulled back down to her body, and she's alive. Then chapter one is from the point of view of her sister, who believes her to have drowned and died at sea three months before. So I'm guessing it's going to be about their reunion, definitely going to keep going with that. Okay, nearly there. Next we have Daughters of Artemis by J.W. Ironmonger. And I've read two of his books before. The first one was called something like The Peculiar Brain of Maximilian something, something like that, and I loved it. It was the strangest and most brilliant book ever. I absolutely loved it. But then I read a second one called The Coincidence Authority, which I just found really silly and I didn't really like it at all. So this could be hit or miss. Ooh, strange cover. Not very pretty at all. I'm not sure how I feel about that one. Oh. My leg's gone dead. <laughs> Interesting premise. So it's about a future where men have basically gone extinct. The world is run by women. Great. And the main character is a woman named Berlin, who has been appointed the executioner. So there are a few men left, we're not quite sure how, where they come from, and her job is that she has to execute them. And this first chapter is her first day on the job, she's just about to go into her first execution. That was a really bloody long first chapter, so I did get quite a lot of it. So just before her first day, she gets a call from this rebellious group who want to reintroduce men into society. Why? <laughs> Kidding. Please don't hate me. And while I was loving the idea, I wasn't particularly enchanted by it. I just don't know. I'm gonna have to not put that one on my TBR for now because I just wasn't convinced by it. Which brings us to the last one, Whatever You Love by Louise Doughty. Doughty. Dofty. <laughs> I have no idea. She wrote Apple Tree Yard, if you read that, which was absolutely brilliant. I can't even really remember what it was about, but it was a murder case, I think, and it was great. So I have a lot of faith in this author. Whatever You Love doesn't give much away as a title. Well, okay, so three different cover versions have come up and they're all so different. So this one looks like an old fashioned heartbreaking story. This one looks very, very creepy. Why is she half in the dark? What's happening in that door? Don't like that at all. And this one looks like a kind of war story. Where's this field that they're in? What's with the red writing? Those three covers all paint such a different story, so I have no idea what to expect from that. But there is only one way to find out. That was absolutely heartbreaking. That was not what I was expecting from her at all. That was really sad. So that whole first chapter is about a mother being told that her daughter has died in a car accident and then going to the hospital to identify her and being told the list of her injuries and sitting by her bed and imagining that she's just asleep and not dead and 
oh my god that was really upsetting really really beautifully written though so i definitely want to read more of that story especially as i'm still intrigued by all those different covers there's still room for this to become a scary story and one of those covers definitely suggested it would it might be a bit like i let you go which was brilliant i definitely recommend that started with a heartbreaking scene of a mother losing her child and the first half of the whole book really i thought was just this really sad story and then there's a twist and suddenly it becomes this terrifying thriller so definitely read that and maybe this will go in the same kind of direction. But oh my god, that was a sad first chapter. I'm definitely keeping this one on the TBR. Okay, so that was my TBR takedown try a chapter tag. I think it went pretty well. And also, that was a great way to spend a lazy Sunday evening. So I might do that more. Technically, this game is a tag. But I'm just going to extend this to everyone. It's really fun. So if you feel like doing it, just do it yourself. Let me know if you have read any of those books. If you think I'm making a big mistake by missing any of them out. Or tell me if any of the ones I chose actually have terrible endings and I should just miss them out entirely. Don't forget to like this video. Hit subscribe for new videos every Monday and Friday. Day, and I'll see you next time. Hello, happy Friday. Today I am drinking tea by myself. So this Friday I'm going to talk about my favourite books that I have never read, which you might think makes no sense, but bear with me.